Hi everyone, welcome to Communication of Chinese Costume Art. Today, I will show you the Long River of Chinese clothing and its source, flow direction, branches, convergence, and weaves. Now let's move to the first lecture, the origin of Chinese clothing. Clothing is the product of human development to a certain historical stage. As one of the cradles of ancient mankind in the world, Chinese people have quite a long history to creating clothes. The Chinese used wood drilling to make fire and burn needles to sew skins into clothes in winter and grass leaves into clothes in summer. The prosperous period of primitive clothing was the Neolithic age. People polished stone tools, made pottery, woven clothes, and agriculture began to develop. People began to build houses. At this time, the most primitive fabric of mankind braided objects has born from the practice of weaving fishing nets and baskets and knitting. Among the more than 7,000 large Neolithic culture sites announced in China, almost all have original tools for spinning and twisting, including varying crowns and varying jewelry. The linen, hemp, wool, and silk have already existed on the clothes. The coat hemp fragment, which was 5,400 years old, was found at the Neolithic site of Cao Xieshan Mountain, Jiangsu Province, and it is now exhibited in the Nanjing Museum. China is the country of silk and the birthplace of silk. A large number of marble and pottery silkworm chrysalis was unearthed from Yangshao culture sites in Liaoning and Shanxi Province. Stone silk worms and pottery silk worms are testimony to the witchcraft worship of the silk worms in primitive society, and the custom of offering sacrifices to silk worm gods was also found in the palaces of all dynasties after the Shang dynasty. Woolen fabrics are materials from ancient nomadic areas in China. Brown woolen clothes and yellow woolen blankets dating back 3,800 years were unearthed in Ruobuzhuo, Xinjiang. Twelve checkered rub, fragments of Neolithic blue, yellow, red woolen clothes, was also found in Wu Bao Cemetery, Xinjiang. Now, I'll talk about the dyeing process of minerals and plants. 50,000 years ago, the cumin had dyed with red powder, ground with hematite, and the decoration they wore were red. At the funeral ceremony, people will sprinkle red hematite powder around the deceased. Red is symbol of blood in primitive man's consciousness. Losing blood means losing life. It can be seen that the early human color concept is interwound with the original religious concept. In the Neolithic age, 7,000 years ago, people were able to dye linen red with hematite powder, and earth in Gansu. 6,000 years ago, people in the Yellow River Basin used ochre to draw patterns on their bodies. This kind of tattoo on the face reflects people's understanding of mineral dyeing. In addition, flowers and leaves, bark and juice, have also become dyes. People have discovered the blue grass can be dyed blue, madder can be dyed red, little sperm can be dyed purple, etc. First of all, hairstyle. As can be seen from the herring pattern and earth in Banpo, Xi'an, people put their hair up to the top of their heads tied in a bun in the middle of the top of their heads, with hair collection inserted horizontally on the bun. Buns are the characteristics of Chinese costumes since ancient times. Different regions and ethnic groups also have different costumes. 
For example, in the Da Di Wan culture. There is short hair, and in the Ma Jia Yao culture, there is braid hand on the back. Snake totem worship on Banpo Mountain Sheep, painted pottery in Ningding City, Gansu Province. A snake sheep decoration has been hung on the top of the head, tilt back. An S shaped snake has been also painted on the clothes. This may be the reaction of snake totem worship, but also related to the descendants of the dragon. Crown. Crown is a symbol of status and etiquette. Its representative style is Xi'an Banpo Harren Bone's pattern. Picked high crown, painted pottery human face, upper forehead, and lower jaw. The painted pattern color which is a reflection of the pattern customs at that time. In fact, ancient primitive clan tribes all had the custom of tattooing. When the matching clothes were created, the tattoo pattern originally painted on the body was covered by the clothes, and then the tattoo pattern was transferred to the clothes, resulting the embroidery craft and clothing pattern. Later, the embroidery craft appeared when the tattoo pattern was embroidered with silk thread. The common costume of primitive people came from images on painted pottery, which usually tied the hide into the barn and fixed it with a hairpin. There are also hats, crests, and clothes with a pointed and domed head and wearing shoes or boots. The clothing includes long sleeve skirt, semi long jacket, short skirt, semi sleeve top coat, tight waist, and crutch trousers. Very about, the pattern of clothes is mainly colored drawing. The representative image comes from the Ma Jia Yao culture in Qinghai, with tight sleeves and knee length tunics. However, the costume of the humanoid painted pottery and earth in Yumen, Gansu province, is unique. The upper part of the body is reticulated. The lower part is wearing trousers without crouch, and the feet are wearing cooked boots. This is the costume image of ancient nomadic people. Three kinds of large hold wool, wool and ring. The difference between and three, the difference between the three is that the one with wide size and small holes is the wall. During the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, B was a sacrificial vessel. The hall is larger than the side, and the side as well as the hall is the ring. Besides being practical, these ornaments also cover the meaning of primitive witchcraft totem. Brief summary. This is how our ancestors went from naked to covered with animal skins and leaves to weaving net to weaving net clothes with plant skins, then twisting and twisting the fine gu and hemp fibers into clothes by hand, and later learned to spin with spinning wheels, weave with original looms, and dye with minerals and plant pigments. Our ancestors opened the prelude of clothing production with intelligence and arduous labor.